So in the last video, I said that uh, this video is going to be about uh, Rita apologizing the girl, but uh, I think you should know something about uh, the apology before moving on to learn how to read apologizing the, the dynamic sculpting. Okay. So first things first, what is a watertight mesh? Now a watertight mesh is something that doesn't have any holes in it. And uh, by holes, I don't mean something like the eyes or the mouth or even a hole like this torus. But uh, by hole, I mean something like this. A hole in the topology itself, something like this, right? So this mesh is not a watertight mesh, while these two meshes, they are watertight, okay? And uh, for the meshes that are meant to be subdivided, something like this, all right? Uh, these meshes should not have any faces that have more than uh, four edges, okay? The faces that have more than four edges are called n-gons, and uh, the, the faces that have only four edges are called quads, and um, a face that uh, have only three edges are obviously called triangles, all right? So a watertight mesh that are meant to be subdivided should have only quads and triangles, no end guns, okay? So from now on, when I talk about a watertight mesh, I mean a mesh that does not have any holes in it and the mesh does not have any end guns, okay? Okay, let's take a look at the quad itself. So a quad face, it uh, defined two different directions, okay? And the direction of the face is uh, defined by the two edges on the opposite side of the face, all right? And the, the, the quad faces that connect together, they form a face flow, okay? Now, in a watertight mesh like this one, all the face flows will eventually come back to where they begin. Let me select this uh, face flow for example and go to wireframe mode. We can see that it is a closed loop. All the flows in a watertight mesh eventually come back where they begin and form a closed loop. Okay, It, it doesn't matter what flow I try to select. Uh, they always uh, come back to where they begin and form a closed loop. So typically, we want to work with watertight mesh and so the um, face flows will always form loops. This is why a lot of people call these face loops. Okay, so for me as well, I will from now on call these face loops. Okay, even though when the face flow have not yet uh, connect back to where it begins, I still call these uh, this uh, face loop because they are meant to be loop. Okay. Now, how do you control the direction of the uh, face loops? Is a vertex that has more or less than two edges. For example, this particular vertex it has five edges, while uh, this one has only three edges. Another example is this particular vertex. It has six edges. And uh, these uh, non-regular vertex, they, kind, they basically change the direction of the flows, I mean the loops. The vertex that, have, uh, that has five edges is called a star. And the star, what it does is that it split two parallel loops. Look at these uh, loops, for example. These started down here, as parallel and as the the loops meet the star they split into different direction all right and uh, take a look at the uh, vertex that have only three edge here this is uh, called a three-way okay and instead of splitting two parallel face loops it actually make the loops cross through each other like so Vertex, vertices that have more than five edges, these are called poles. 
Now the poles, they generally do the same thing as the star, but um, they tend to mess up your topology, so um, we generally want to avoid using poles like this. However, in some cases, poles like this might prove to be useful. Okay, so by using non-regular vertices like these, uh, we can control the uh, direction of the phase loop however we want. Let's take a look at this example now. And uh, we can see that uh, from the bottom we have five phase loops, all right? But on the top we only have three, and uh, the phase uh, and the mesh is simplified up here, while down here we have more geometry to work on, okay? And uh, in, in order to turn five loops into three, I actually connected the two loops to make it one. So this loop is uh, redirected back down instead of letting it going up. Okay, so by using the stars and the three ways and as well as the other non-regular vertices, we can control the um, topology however we like. Okay, so next up, let's talk about triangles. Now, a lot of people seem to believe that uh, triangles are your enemy and uh, you should avoid using triangles at all cost. And um, yeah, uh, many people seem to believe this and even my teachers as well. But uh, the triangles, uh, there are times and place to use them and they actually have a purpose, a very useful purpose. What they do is that uh, they terminate phase loops. Well, take a look at this example. This particular phase loop is terminated using two triangles, one on each side. And uh, take a look at this different example. This one triangle terminate this entire loop as well as terminating another loop. But the other loop, the other side of the loop, uh, also need to be terminated. So there must be another triangle. Otherwise, uh, this will go on forever on a supposedly uh, watertight mesh, and uh, it will mess up your entire model. Okay. So generally speaking, when you when you use a triangle to terminate one side of the loop, you need to use another triangle to you to terminate the other side of the loop and um, what does that means that means triangles always come in pairs and the number of triangles in a watertight mesh is always even all right if you for some reason decided decide to use one triangle be prepared to use another triangle somewhere else so how do you use triangles the purpose of the triangles is that they terminate you know, the, the, the loops and uh, take a look at this example. On the right side we have very complicated uh, topology while on the left side we have a much simpler topology. So the triangles can help you clean up your mesh uh, very quickly and efficiently. And uh, yeah, you can basically terminate a lot of uh, phase loops to simplify the topology in order to make another part of the body. And uh, yeah, so that's the purpose of the triangle. Now, the triangles, they come with a consequence. Take a look at this mesh, for example. This is supposed to be a curved surface, and I use these three triangles to terminate three loops and simplify the uh, topology for the left part in order to do something else, whatever I want to do on the, the left part. But this is a curved surface and it is meant to be subdivided. And uh, what happened when I subdivide the mesh? We can see that the mesh turned out to be quite pointy where the triangle is. So that, that is the consequence of the triangle. They basically pinch your mesh. So, in uh, generally speaking, you want to avoid triangles in curved surface, but for a, for a flat surface like this, triangles are okay. 
And there are also many cases where triangles are very good. For example, the areas in between the fingers. The, these areas are supposed to be pinched and uh, there are a lot of dirty loops in the between the fingers. And you can just use triangles to terminate those loops uh, quite beautifully. And if you don't want to use triangles, you can find yourself having a lot of dirty loops. And uh, yeah, I think I forgot to tell you what a dirty loop is. So let's switch back to our original uh, model. And uh, this is something called a dirty loop. And because uh, the loop go all over the body and uh, and if I am to add more geometry to the face in order to sculpt something, uh, I will have to add more geometry throughout the entire mesh. So this is uh, a very dirty loop and uh, I generally don't want to subdivide uh, the dirty loops like this. So again, if you don't want to use triangles, then your hand model will end up with a lot of dirty loops. Alright, with that said, how do you avoid using triangles on curved surface? And there's actually a trick uh, to do that. Let's switch to another collection. Let me turn off the, the selection real quick. And, uh, uh, oh yeah, it's here. Alright. So suppose this is a curved surface that we need to finish and now I need to fill in these holes to finish the mesh. So how do I know that uh, I can fill in these holes without using any triangles? Okay, so just by the look of it, I can tell that I can fill in this hole without any triangles. Okay, this hole can be filled in using only quad faces. But looking at this hole and this hole, I can tell that there is at least one triangle in this hole and one triangle down here in this hole. So how do I know that? The answer is counting the edges of the hole. This hole, it has a, an odd number of edges and so is the hole down here. This hole down here has 11 edges, which is an odd number and uh, this hole it has 12 edges so this hole can this hole can be filled without uh, using any triangle while in this hole we have to use at least one triangle and the number of triangle in within this hole will be always odd so is the hole down here so yeah let's try to fill in this hole oh wait wait uh, one more one more thing about this hole is that if you try to use a triangle within this hole, be prepared you to use another triangle somewhere else within this hole as well. And uh, that is because when the hole has a an even number of edges, the number of triangles will always be even or zero. And if the, the number of edges of a hole is odd, uh, then the number of triangle is uh, going to be odd, okay? and uh, that means it is at least one so let's try to fill in this hole okay all right looking good and uh, let's do let me fill in it real quick all right you can see that i filled in this particular hole without using any triangle okay now, let's try filling in this hole. So you can see, there is one triangle here. And it, it doesn't matter how I try to fill in this uh, hole, I will, I will always end up with one triangle. Okay, and uh, let's see about uh, the hole down here. Let's try to fill in this hole as well. See, we always end up with a triangle, and it doesn't matter how we try to 
fill in these these two holes, uh, we always end up with uh, triangles. So the only way we can avoid triangles in these phase uh, in these holes is to add one edge loop or remove one edge loop. Okay. Now let's try ad adding one edge loop here here. And as you can see, the the two ed the edge loop connects the two holes. And uh, let's try adding the loop elsewhere. The edge loop comes back where it uh, into the hole again. This means that two more edge two more edges have been added into this hole, and the number of edges is still odd, and there will be one triangle within the mesh. I mean the the hole. So we can't just add in any edge loop. Instead, we have to add an edge loop that connect the two holes together, something like this. Okay. Now, the, the, these two holes, uh, they have a, an even number of edges now, and uh, we can fill in this uh, these two holes without any triangle. All right, see that? And so is the hole down here. We can fill in this hole with confidence that there will be no triangles. However, we end up with something like this, a three-way, okay? Now, this uh, three-way is uh, very similar to a triangle and in fact it's actually a subdivided triangle so if i am to remove these uh, three edge loops we can see that we have a triangle so yeah a three-way is actually just a subdivided triangle and it also brings the troubles of a triangle but uh, the trouble is not that much of a big deal and uh, people who keep saying something like uh, avoid using triangle and triangles are your enemies and stuff they don't know anything they just uh, repeat what the teacher tells them so yeah the the problem of uh, triangles are pretty much overrated and uh, generally speaking you want to avoid triangles but uh, not always so yeah that's it for this uh, video that is the topology theory that I have figured out through the years and uh, I keep these in mind when I read apologize to the girl and uh, you should keep that in mind as well as you watch the next video. I'll see you next time.